98.5 FM. WSBFM Atlanta. And worldwide at B985.com. Good morning. Welcome to Change Your Mind, Change Your Life, the radio show and spiritual healing and recovery. I'm your host, Susie Marsh, a licensed clinical social worker. Hey, good morning and welcome to the show. Well, I invited this guest to be on our show today because of a couple of reasons. First of all, Sean Wheeler founded his hypnotherapy practice, Pure Hypnosis LLC, in the spring of 2003 with a specific focus on helping people to conquer fears and phobias, stop smoking and lose weight, and that's why I should have contacted him. Actually, I wanted him to come on the show because for the past 10 years he's performed as an MC, improv, comedy actor, stand-up comedian, and comedy stage. That's the best. Comedy stage hypnotist at the biggest and best venues in Atlanta, Fox Theater, Punchline, Funny Farm, Whole World Theater, and many more. So anyway, I thought it would be so interesting. (laughs) So thanks so much for coming on the show today, Sean. Thank you, Susie. Well, let's start with, um, this is crazy of me, of course, but um, what did you do when you did uh, stage hypnosis? I mean, I'm thinking of the stuff they did in the 50s. Yeah, no, it's it's much different now. Like, the old thing that people always talk about is, you know, you're going to make people cluck like chickens, but that's, it's really kind of lame. And if you... The, you just the, make them take off their clothes, or? Um, uh, I'll say on the radio, no. But yeah, <laughs> you know, there, there are some hypnotists who do, you know, they'll do, like, um, more risque shows. Now, when I went to train to be a stage hypnotist, went out to Vegas and each night as a group of stage hypnotists in training we went out to see a show um, the second show we went to the second night was an adult show and it was a risque show and I of course volunteered because you know with my background in doing comedy I have no shame and <laughs> I, I enjoy people laughing at me so uh, during that show he was doing some more risque type things nothing nudity nothing really that's offensive but um, some things that kids wouldn't want to see um, and yet I did everything from beginning to end without hesitation because when you're hypnotized um, it's not like you don't know what you're doing it's that you just don't care all that self-awareness of oh these people are judging me or I might look foolish or my friends might you know make fun of me afterwards all that is gone so when you're in that state of mind and you're doing these ridiculous things it's like you're around your best friend you just don't care but I've heard that I'm, I've never done deep trance hypnosis, experienced it, or um, did it with clients, but I've heard that you actually wouldn't do anything under um, deep trance hypnosis that you wouldn't do regularly. Is that true? Right. The way I say it when I do a show is I say, you know, when you're hypnotized, you won't do anything that's against your morals or values. So if you don't have any morals or values, please volunteer, you know, because that's the, you know, these are the kind of people that are going to be able to go over the top. <laughs> What you see when you see a comedy hypnosis show is you'll see a spectrum of people, some who are very, very responsive and some who are just a little bit responsive. So a good hypnotist will know which people to pick to do specific things with. And so when I volunteer in a show, since I'm so responsive, they always pick me to do things like, you know, lip sync Britney Spears, which is another thing I did out in Vegas. So I'm doing this. I'm going full out. The audience is laughing. And little known to the audience is that I know exactly what I'm doing. And at the end of the performance, I walk up to the hypnotist and I wrap my arms around him and I kiss him on the forehead, which I don't think he was expecting. Um, because it, it's just like what you're going to do is what you're already predisposed to do, except you're more free to do it without hesitation. So I'd be like you. Yeah. <laughs> my guess after knowing you only for a few minutes is that yes. <laughs> now that that is how they pick those people. So that's interesting. So when um, so if you were to get somebody up there who's extremely shy and reserved, they're not going to all of a sudden... First of all, you're not going to get anyone up there who's extremely shy and reserved. Now, no stage hypnosis show that I've ever been to pulls people up against their will. So what you have to realize is that the people that are on the stage already are those who have volunteered and know that they're going to be asked to do ridiculous things. So at that point, once they're hypnotized, which is taking you from a state of normal self-conscious awareness to a state of feeling really, really good and relaxed, well, guess what? When someone asks you to cluck like a chicken, you're probably going to go ahead and do it because who cares? (laughs) Are you hypnotizing me right now? Yes, I am. (laughs) 
kid, could you hypnotize me to earn more money? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on myself on that one right now. But I'd actually like to be a therapist and do that. <laughs> um, well, okay, first of all, I never knew there was like stage hypnotist training. Well, there's, uh, you know, you can go to train to do hypnosis anywhere. Right. And there are no like official state licensures. Even right. to be a clinical hypnotherapist, right. there's no state certification. Um, but what you can do is if you, if you look around enough, you can find uh, training like I did where enough people have gone through it, put testimonials out, you know, given enough praise and respect to it. Um, so that's the one that I signed up for, which is out in Las Vegas. Um, that's wild. Yeah. You, I didn't you even know it to, existed. Yeah, I didn't know. Look, the, the, the funny thing is, is I didn't know clinical hypnotherapy school existed. I mean, I went to school like anyone else. I went to college. I studied broadcast journalism. I got a job with CNN. And a few years later, I, I tried hypnosis out. And once I tried it out and it worked. None um, of my business, but I'm a therapist. What did you try it out for? Um, at the time, well, I, what I was doing at the time was I was working with CNN and I was doing improv comedy. And I wanted to feel more comfortable and confident in front oh. of audiences. So I looked up a hypnotherapist and I went and I made an appointment. And it was fantastic. And what I did after that was I started doing hypnosis every day, listening to the tape that he made for me. And after a couple of years went by, um, I realized, hey, you know, there's something to this. And it's actually, you know, the reason that I ended up training to do this is because I had laid off from a job. So my whole department at CNN was cut, and this was shortly after the AOL Time Warner merger, but our network was bought out by ESPN, and I found myself on severance uh, and trying to decide what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And so at the time, I went to my hypnotherapist and I said, hey, do you know anyone that does a good training? And he said, well, whatever you do, don't do an online training. Get an in-person training with someone who knows what they're doing. I did it, signed up, took the class. It just happened to be starting a couple months later. Um, and after that, I started my practice. That's great. Yeah. So when when people say clinical hypnotherapy, you know, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. So part of me thinks, so are you doing psychotherapy? Well, the main focus of what I do is, you know, typically the heart of my business is helping people to, to stop smoking and helping people lose weight, and I do a lot of fear of flying work. But, yeah, a lot of what I do is therapy. I mean, it's people who have issues that they're trying to resolve, and I'm helping them through it by talking to them about it, by asking them good questions. And the hypnosis is a tool. And what that tool allows you to do is to deliver messages to a person's subconscious to allow them to accept things that their conscious filter and their skepticism typically prevents them from accepting. That's it. But, okay, I have to say this as a therapist, but what about the danger of doing psychotherapy and not being licensed, although you're probably thinking, well, look at you. No. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, the honest thing is, is that it's not psychotherapy per se. I mean, I'm not, I'm not prescribing any medication, and all I'm doing is talking to the person. Um, when someone comes to me for hypnotherapy, they sit down, and for the first half hour, 45 minutes, I'm with someone, or sometimes the entire session, we just talk. Um, once they understand that I'm on the same page with them, and once I get a better understanding of what the nature of their problem is and what they want to do, then we'll do some hypnosis in which I'll basically help them to relax and then talk to them about things that they already know that they want to do. That's it. So when somebody is concerned about their weight, do you ever do anything related to like past history, childhood stuff, or you just try to stick with behavior? Very rarely. There are some therapists who do a lot of regression work, and I'm just not a fan of that. The way that I learned to do things was focusing on the present uh, and moving forward toward the future. So when I work with someone on losing weight, my question is basically, what are you doing now? And what is it that you would like to be doing? What is it that's going to be, what is, what, what is it that's going to make you happy? That's going to give you the results that you want. And I basically help them by eliminating whatever those blocks are. That's it. I think that when people have, you know, experienced a lot of pain in the past, that going back and reliving that tends to make it even worse. You know, once is enough. So my work tends to focus on moving forward. <laughs> so you would never want to get a degree in therapy and do any of that kind of um, inner child work or intense past history work? I've, I've thought about that at times, but the truth is that I just don't think that going into the past is as effective as working on the present.